Hi, I'm Dr. Arthi Thangadu. I'm a physician who focuses on diabetes, thyroid, and other hormonal and metabolic diseases. I'm here to spread the message about evidence-based endocrinology. Thanks so much for being here, and I hope that some of this information benefits you. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with anyone who you think could benefit. Today, we are going to discuss diagnosis of elevated cortisol. So, there are three tests that we use in endocrinology that are evidence-based ways to look for elevated cortisol. They are an overnight dexamethasone suppression test. This involves taking a pill at 11 p.m. the night before you have your cortisol checked the next morning. The second test that we use is a 24-hour urine-free cortisol. This is a 24-hour collection of urine that we test your cortisol in. And the third is a midnight salivary cortisol, and we need two of these. Midnight salivary cortisol involves the patient collecting a sample of saliva at midnight to assess what their cortisol levels are at that time. These are the three diagnostic tests that are based on evidence. There are several tests out there, even ones that you can mail order online to do at home, and many providers are doing other cortisol tests, but those are not based on evidence. And so it is really, really important to have an accurate diagnosis before we treat a disease. So that's why I created this video to let you know what are actually evidence-based tests for elevated cortisol. Accurate testing is necessary for accurate diagnosis. An accurate diagnosis is necessary for accurate treatment. Elevated cortisol is not a common diagnosis, and it is not a diagnosis that you necessarily want to have. Treatment of true elevated cortisol can be time-consuming and complex. We all have fluctuations in our cortisol from day to day based on physiologic and psychologic stress, but not all elevations are pathologic. By pathologic, I mean in need of medical intervention. So yes, you may have a moderately elevated cortisol due to stressors or illness or other things like that. But since cortisol levels are so variable in each person, it is really hard to identify those mild to moderate day-to-day -day fluctuations in cortisol. Modulating our physiologic and psychologic stressors is important for all of us, but there is no good lab test to tell us whether we have a moderate but not pathologically high cortisol level. I know there is a ton of information on the internet about cortisol, stress, inflammation, all of these kinds of things. So I'm here to provide evidence-based information on how we test for high cortisol. I hope this was helpful and thanks so much for being here. Please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Thanks so much and see you next time.